Uh, welcome to Everyday Money Matters on Lagos Talks 91.3 FM. My name is Adu. It's a beautiful Wednesday, the 18th of August. And this is uh, brought to you in partnership with our friends at Naira Metrics. And today we have a special guest. Well, before I get into that, of course, the usual suspect uh, suspects are in the building. Of course, Olumide is with me today, our money man himself. Hello, Olumide. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Adam. Looking good. Yeah, looking good too. Happy Wednesday. Uh, yeah, happy Wednesday uh, for you as well. And like I did mention to you, uh, we have a special guest in our in our midst today. He's the head of investment advisory at Standard Chattered Bank. And I'm talking about none other than Mr. Larry Olajide. Larry, how are you doing today? Very well. Um, Adu, good morning. Olumide, yeah, good morning. Welcome, yeah. welcome. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. So, gentlemen, there are lots to talk about here on the show. Of course, you know, uh, Everyday Money Matters is your number one stop for personal finance information. And, of course, just answering your question generally uh, in the money world. Of course, today, our friends from Standard Chatter are joining us in this conversation. So, Larry and Olumide, you'll be helping us answer questions from our listeners. And... Uh, you know, different people ask questions in different regards. So I'll just go from one person to the other so we can try to see as many as we can accommodate. Uh, let's start from the usual questions that Olamide would help us tackle. And those are questions in the crypto space. And uh, Olamide, someone is asking here, what is staking in cryptocurrency and how can I do it? So the person is asking for the term staking in cryptocurrency trading and uh, how can I do it? Okay, um, once again, good morning, um, listeners. Um, basically, staking, just uh, staking is a technical term used in the crypto world, uh, like um, something you, you call saving in the financial world. You know, when you go to the bank, you, you lock up your money uh, for a period of time, especially when you're doing a fixed deposit. And right. at the end of the day, after that 10 or you earn, um, some rewards. So staking basically does that. So uh, basically what you're doing, in, in the case of Ethereum, Ethereum for example, mm -hmm. you are um, locking your, your Ethereum assets for a period of time. And the importance of that is that you contribute to the security and by that you earn um, rewards. So basically how you do that is that um, we have so many, for example, I mentioned Ethereum. Ethereum is the leading altcoin that does that. Then we have some projects that support that. So uh, you could lock your period, and the interest is usually higher, though it's riskier. You can't compare uh, the, the risk that comes with it. The, the, the rewards are usually far higher. So uh, that's where you see a substantial amount of investors earning money. And that's usually why we see um, Ethereum, the leading altcoin, recently, uh, recently rising because uh, it's now most investors are now staking into Ethereum because of the rewards and, you know, do we, I think you need a substantial amount of a term to do that. You need to understand that it also comes with risk because uh, if there's a price differential for, for a kind of a long period, uh, there's a, a trap, rapid drop in prices and your rewards might look uh, inconsequential. So uh, that's what it's really about. So mm -hmm. they, you, you call them, some people call them validators, some people call them stakers. They are just people that take part in this process. So basically that's what it is. Okay, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Uh, Larry, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, there's a question here that I think, you know, your expertise might come in, uh, in handy for. This person says, I have 10 million Naira and I want to invest it that I've saved up uh, for five years, what investments can I make? 10 million naira that I've saved up over a period of five years and I'm thinking of investing. Uh, are there practical investments that you can point this individual to, Larry? Yeah, thanks a lot, um, Adu. And um, to our listeners, once again, good morning. Um, what, one very key principle of investment would be diversification. Um, so I would definitely be splitting your 10 million naira um, amongst various asset classes, talking about bonds, um, maybe treasury bills, um, equities, mutual funds. But one thing that I would tell you is absolutely important is having an investment profile before you even begin to invest. Now, um, an investment profile basically tells you 
what your risk rating is, your risk tolerance level. It tells you what your investment objectives are. It uh, gives an idea of what the time horizon you're looking at is, what type of returns you're looking at. Um, and it's when you have all of this in place that you can begin to determine if any particular asset class will be part of your portfolio and um, what sort of allocation you would be looking um, at for every particular one, basically. So this is something that most people overlook. And um, just to use this opportunity to say, do not put the card before the horse. Uh, it's actually the very first thing that you need to do. At Standard Chartered, for instance, um, it's absolutely a no-no for a client to begin the investment process without first having this um, client investment uh, profile in place. So the short answer to your question is, um, a key thing to do would be to diversify. Um, we're not going to put all the eggs in one basket, as it were, uh, but then again, your profile would determine how much of it would go to bonds or treasury bills or equities um, or mutual funds. Wow, thank, thank you. Thank you, Larry, for that. I, I, and speaking of much, mutual funds, um, yeah. I'm sure it's a good investment to make in Nigeria considering uh, inflation and the rest of it. Yeah, I, I absolutely, I do. Um, and and when, you, when we talk about mutual funds, it's perhaps good to have an understanding of what they are. Basically, just um, an investment vehicle um, through which a fund manager pulls resources or funds together from different investors. Now, what, what are the benefits of, of a mutual fund? It's professionally managed. Um, it gives retail investors the opportunity to invest in certain asset classes that they ordinarily would not have the capacity to invest in. Some of them deliver um, income that's dividend um, gets paid on a periodic basis. Uh, capital appreciation is, is good over you know, the long term. Um, the initial investment amount is usually you know, smaller than what you would see for most other types of investments, you know, and so on and so forth. So whether you're talking about investing in mutual funds in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, it's always a good idea. Now, one key benefit of mutual funds, again, would be the diversification that it offers. So in a single mutual fund portfolio, you could perhaps see 20, 30, 50, or even 100 different companies. So if I had a mutual fund that is focused on equities, for instance, you could see 50 companies in it. What this does is it gives me that diversification. If I had to individually invest in all of these companies, I perhaps would not have the resources to do so. I perhaps would not have the ability to even monitor their performance. But doing so through a mutual fund allows me to benefit from whatever profit is happening in each of these uh, companies. And because it's also professionally managed, I don't have to go through the headache of you know checking performance and everything. I leave that up to the fund uh, manager and, uh, and usually they deliver. Now, talking about diversification, it doesn't happen just um, in the asset class space. Uh, what I mean is you're diversifying not just because you're buying a mutual fund that is focused on equities and it's looking at 50 companies or focused on bonds and it's looking at 50 issuers. You can also diversify currency wise, you know, so the, the, the mutual funds that are denominated in the local currency as well as in foreign currency, you know, just as I mentioned earlier, a key principle of investing is actually diversification. So whatever you do, diversify across asset classes, diversify across products, diversify across uh, currencies um, and mutual funds. Um, I, I can't think of any other type of you know, um, investment product that helps you to achieve this as much as mutual funds. So always a good idea to invest in them. Thank you very much, Larry, for that. Speaking of currencies, Olumide, uh, let's talk about cryptos. Uh, this person is asking, says, what are the secure platforms I can store my cryptocurrencies in? Person says, and mentions one, MetaMask. Would you recommend it as a good place? Um, that's very tricky, but this is what it, the, the narrative is. Uh, first of all, you need to understand that uh, you don't usually you don't usually keep your treasuries in marketplaces. For example, you go to the market to buy things. So actually, what you do is that you keep things in the bank, right? So the bank is like the best, the safest uh, fiat treasury we have around. So in the crypto space, we have something similar to that. You know, uh, the crypto exchange usually have can accommodate um, 
where you keep your uh, treasuries. But you know, because it's a marketplace, we have so many kind of people with ulterior motives. We have people that plan to hack these platforms, and you know, sometimes we've seen over the years that even the most powerful uh, crypto exchanges have been hacked. So the, the narrative is, how do we uh, save um, our crypto assets? Well, if you are an Elon Musk, for example, or a Michael Saylor, or, or a JP Morgan, definitely you go through the most expensive routes, and that's cool, cool storage. is a form of um, is a form of facility done by some of these institutional uh, crypto platforms that uh, they keep. The, your assets offline. So basically, um, hackers you won't be able to get there. But if you are not an Elon Musk and uh, basically you're just trying to live a simple life, then we have some source, um, some decent software wallets, and that's where you see uh, the likes of MetaMask, Trust Wallet, and the likes. So basically, what what they do is that um, uh, they are independent. So you have a password and you have private keys. But this is the catch: those private keys. You need to keep them with your life because once somebody gets that, there's nothing like, um, oh, somebody stole my password or my private keys and uh, can you, it's gone, your wallet is gone. So what people do is that your private uh, keys are kept in places that just you and God that um, would, would uh, have that. Uh, <laughs> because um, we've seen a lot of cases where people get swindled millions of dollars because they lost their private keys. So it's, it's, it's a two-way thing. But also, I think crypto exchanges too are trying to upgrade their platforms. Uh, they, 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 um, they've remained, like, if you look at the likes of Binance, FTX, Coinbase, they have a very secure platform. But still at that, you know, like I said, it's always safe to keep your treasuries off the marketplace. Um, um, speaking of uh, markets, uh, someone was asking one of our listeners and saying, you know, he wants to know how easy is it to roll out a crypto uh, coin because uh, you know cryptos are like introduced every, every other minute you know so the, yeah uh, shown very interesting of- question very interesting question you know the fact that you need to understand this is a, a fast evolving financial asset class and uh, you need to understand the the brain behind uh, the blockchain and the crypto industry so it's, it's something that has to do with a lot of real case scenario we have uh, cryptos for music we have audio for example that uh, enhance music we have for sports we have for banks we have for processes payments i do name there's so many but this is the problem we have over 8500 cryptocurrencies and basically i've been tracking most of these coins um, I, I can't even give you some of their fundamentals some are very questionable fundamentals and you see, we have a number of coins that are even generated by nigerians but you see, the, the catch is that, you know, because there's so much money, there's so much attention in the cryptocurrency, some of these projects are questionable. So uh, people get to run into these programs and get into trouble. And you see that over the years, for example, the US regulators, financial regulators have issued sanctions or in some cases, extreme cases, due time to some of these perpetrators running uh, for, for this scheme. So, I think the I think my advice is if you really have a good use case scenario like uh, the user that wants to um, launch this project whether through an ICO or exchange token or whatever I think first of all you need to build a solid team and now that um, the the US regulator now is tightening nozzles against crypto assets trust me much about 75% will definitely go on that because uh, based on the definition of what the U.S. Uh, uh, Security Exchange Commission is saying, many of them will have to be regulated, and some of them don't have the paper fundamentals to survive that regulation. So the thing is that um, I advise people to always um, look at real value, don't rush into because this is where you think where the money is. Uh, it, it can haunt you later, uh, you know, and. Um, for him that wants to launch this thing, I think you need a lawyer, you need, you need to look at compliance, you need to look at things like that, because you need to create a white paper, you need to also have funding, have you, have you raised millions of dollars, what's your unique, are, are you, do you have patents, do you have a unique um, fundamental, are you capable, what's your background, have you done a lot of um, developing projects, or you just want to um, come into the space to make money, so these are questions that you should ask, you know. Hmm. 
All right, thank you, Alumide. Thank, uh, thank you, Larry. Just in case you just yeah. tuned in, you're listening to Everyday Money Matters on Lagos Talks 91.3, brought to you in partnership with our friends at Naira Metrics. And today I have Larry Oladiji, Oladiji Begapadin, Head of Investment Advisory at Standard Chatted, as well as our money man himself, Olumide. When we come back from this, we'll take more of your questions, so do not touch a dial. Can't think of a reason why you should apply for a Standard Chatted Visa credit card? One, a 50-day interest-free period? That's unbeatable. We've checked. Two, get up to five free supplementary cards for your family members. Plus, you earn redeemable reward points every time you use your card. A standard chartered credit card is the right card for money when you need it. For more information, please send an email to creditcards.ng at sc.com or call our call center on 01-270-4611 or toll free on 0800-123-5000. Standard Chartered Bank, here for good. Welcome back to the show. And uh, you're taking questions now still. So, so let me get into... Uh, this one here, uh, Larry, you might want to help us here uh, because this person is talking about stocks and uh, um, investment and all of that. So it says, uh, so I'm combining two questions together now. Is now a good time to buy Nigerian stocks? And where do you think the all share index will end um, this year? That's the question A. And then the B part, uh, Larry, this <laughs> to invest in FGN bonds and wait to maturity or trade them as an individual? So those are the two questions. Is now a good time to yep. buy stocks? Mm. And where do you think the all share index will end this year? And the B part, is it better to invest in FGN bonds and wait to maturity or trade them as an individual? Thanks, Adu. Uh, that's a double barrel question. Um, maybe I'll start from uh, the second part of the first um, question, uh, actually. Um, the all share index um, is about uh, 39, less than 40,000, I think about 39,500 right now. Um, it closed 2020 at about uh, 40,300, thereabouts. Um, very good performance. The NSC did very well last last year. I think, I think um, year on year it did about 50,000. Today it's it's at minus 1.8. Uh, so personally, I think there's a lot of room for growth uh, this year. Um, I think the reflation agenda is still is still on. Uh, so potentially, um, quote and unquote, uh, because at the end of the day, it's just potential. You know, how the stock market ends the year um, ultimately will depend on you know a number of variables. You know, the performance of the companies listed there, uh, talking about the reports. Um, with also flows from FPIs um, and individual investors here in, in, in Nigeria. Um, investor sentiments generally, um, the, the COVID thing is still on and it's, um, it's on and off, souring our sentiments um, on and off. You know, so at the end of the day, uh, it remains to be seen where we're going to end. Um, if, if, I, if I could tell, 100% where it's going to land, um, I probably would just have a crystal ball where, where I'll be consulting for people. Uh, but, <laughs> what, but, but one thing I would tell you, and this is very, very important, it's very, very possible for the ASI to move up in 2021 and for an investor in the stock markets in Nigeria not to benefit from it if you're not invested in the well-performing um, stocks. So, so the point I would make going, going to the first um, question now, the, the first point of the first question is to say this, um, as an investor in equities, what are your primary objectives? You're looking at income, uh, talking about consistent and decent dividends. You're looking at capital appreciation over the medium to long-term. And there are quite a number of stocks in the market today that have done this consistently uh, so, so, so my admonishment would be focus on the fundamentals, you know, uh, pick those stocks. Uh, if, if you speak to a stockbroker, they can help identify and actually give you details of, of those stocks. And they're always, it's always a good time to invest in those stocks because for sure, historically, they've, they've delivered on their mandate. Um, and on, for, on a forward going basis, it's, it's very likely that they will continue to deliver. So I would say focus on that. 
Um, now to the second question, um, should FGN you, bonds. yeah, should you FGN. hold FGN bonds till maturity or should you trade them? Um, trading FGN bonds, like trading any other asset uh, or any other type of securities would require some expertise, uh, competence. It would require time. It would require resources uh, because there are fees for buying and selling constantly, yeah. um, you know, so. I, I think leave that to the professionals. Um, as a retail investor, your, your primary reasons for investing in the FGN bonds, again, would be stability. Relative to equities, you know, bonds are generally more stable. Um, it would be security. Um, FGN bonds are backed by the full faith of the, the Nigerian government. It would be regular income. Uh, coupons are paid um, on a periodic uh, basis. It would be you know, the ability to plan because FDN bonds have maturity periods. So you can sit down here today, determine what levels of coupons you will receive over the life of the bond. And also um, you can determine how much would be paid to you back as principal at face value. Now, once you have all of those, I think you should be happy. Uh, opportunities will come at some point. Um, about four or five years ago, I remember the FGN bonds did so well that some clients who had invested without even receiving a single coupon actually sold and they took huge gains. So you will see those opportunities come and go. And when they come, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking advantage of them uh, because you would be doing so profitably uh, and cheaply, you know. Uh, but, but I would say let your fundamental reasons for investing in FGN bonds be all of those things I earlier highlighted. Wow, thank you very much, Larry, quite insightful. Uh, one of the stories that I've been making the rounds um, recently is the CBN freezing the accounts of um, fintech companies, uh, uh, fintech companies, uh, so people like Bamboo uh, and, uh, and Co. In fact, one of our panelists also one of our guests on the on the platform also asked the question, Olumide, how bad can the account freeze uh, on these fintechs get? Is the CBN just showing off its powers? Why did the CBN freeze these accounts? Yeah, uh, good question, Adu. Uh, I'm happy that uh, you answered them, those kind of valid questions, because um, we've been seeing um, such questions on social media. First of all, let's go back to the case study. Uh, the Apex Bank in its wisdom, um, plays a major role in the economy, and one of the one of its functions are to ensure financial stability and credibility across channels. So um, they have powers to um, to hold things that are against that interest. So uh, basically, what happened was that there was a court um, there was a court ruling uh, by power, uh, by courts, a Nigerian court that uh, issued uh, approved the suspension of. Um, their accounts for 180 days, that's about six months. And the rationality, the rationality was clearly stated. You know, the judge cited the law. The first thing was that many of these companies were not registered as a financial asset management or broker or stockbroking or investment firm. So the first thing is that they didn't have the share capital or the legal uh, capability to offer the, those services. That was the first one. The second one was that, um, the, uh, the, the the source where they got their FX, they illegally got their FX. So, uh, and they went beyond the limits. I won't call the numbers right now or names, but uh, the proof was really stated. So it wasn't beyond, it wasn't a case of uh, the CBN haunting these guys. You need to understand that the CBN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, is mandated to ensure that Nigerian currency is safeguarded. You see, this, uh, this is what we're saying. We're talking about uh, we've been talking about the fact that the Naira is weakening, uh, the fact that the Naira is a bit loose. So you see, it, um, in systems, um, legality plays a, a very big role. So I'm sorry that a lot of people are already uh, are already feeling uh, kind of, uh, I, I want to use the word hot, but the narrative is that the, the, that's, not the, that's not the job of the Apex Bank to hurt people. They're trying to protect the system. We have regulated in financial institutions, like you see a, a bank like Standard Chartered, for example, they are confined to the law to do things across. And that's why uh, you, you, you didn't hear the, the CBN sanctioning Standard Chartered. So uh, those that were sanctioned had uh, a case to answer. So uh, basically what's going to happen is that 
well, their assets, their funds are tied up within that period, except there's an injunction or there's a, a change in narrative. But I advise users, like, you know, when in our metrics over the years, if you've been listening to our programs, we always tell people that, yeah, fintechs are interesting, they're good, they, they have a very credible team, but you always have to stick to regulation. You always have to stick to regulation. Finance is not emotional business. It's not, it's not an entertainment or a socialized business. It's something that heavily regulated. So if you want to keep your funds in places you can sleep uh, for years, I always tell people traditional investment institutions are the key. But are, are you saying that fintechs are not? They are good. They are coming up. We we saw some already getting SEC regulation, but the fact that the Apex Bank also mentioned illegal FX dealings on that spectrum, then that was a monetary concern. And I think they also have case to answer on that one. So I think basically those apps that were, those fintech companies that uh, were listed uh, will have uh, some kind of run because that definitely that will cripple the operation. It will cripple the banking operation, you know, to cripple. And so sad, but uh, I think the CBN did, uh, in, with his wisdom, because they, they followed the law, the lawyers, the judge. I, I don't think uh, there was any bias in that uh, ruling. All right, uh, thank you very much, Olumide. Lastly, uh, Larry, before we go, quick one. This person says, I'm in a dilemma. Oh, should I invest in T-bills or do a fixed deposit with the bank? <laughs> Quickly, would you uh -huh. have? Well, again, it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, T-bills, as you know, have a maximum uh, tenor of uh, 365, 366 days. Um, yes, you, you you will see some fixed deposits that that um, you can do for two, three years, depending on what the bank accepts for you to do. But I think uh, some of the key considerations, again, would be returns. Um, if, if you're looking at T-bills in, in the primary space now, uh, through the primary auction, you could probably get uh, about 8% or thereabouts for the 365 day one. Um, I, I would be hard pressed to see any fixed deposit in the market currently that that pays that high in terms of um, in terms of returns. So you know, key considerations: your returns, um, also the issuer um, T bills, of course, issued by the CBN stroke FGN uh, Treasury um, fixed deposits. Of course, um, you're putting your money with the bank, uh, so. Again, do, those are things to, to just consider really. But I know for most people, it's always the yield that is the key consideration, especially because bo both of them can be relatively short term. Uh, so, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Larry Olajide, who is the head of investment advisory at Standard Chartered Bank. And of course, our very own Olumide Adishina, the final man here from Nyrometrics. Thank you, both of you, for adding your flavor to today's uh, conversation. Now, if you're listening and you want to take a listen to what Larry and Olumide shared, to the questions asked, you can go to our YouTube page um, and watch them over and over again, or just go to YouTube forward slash Nyrometrics and uh, watch the program again, uh, over and over again. And uh, hopefully we'll get to have another conversation uh, sometime uh, next week. Until then, do enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for listening. Sports Zone is coming up.